Hello, my name is Jack Parker, and today I'm going to be talking to you about cults. Well, <laughs> okay, that's kind of an overgeneralization. More specifically, I want to talk about how scholars approach these alternative religious movements and interpret their actions. Beyond mainstream religions, groups of people strike out to create their own belief systems, often mixing elements of accepted religions with ideologies considered strange or dangerous by the outside world. The violence and death that interactions between these groups and outside society have yielded in the past prompt scholars to study these movements in the hopes of discovering how to prevent similar tragedies in the future. However, a specific approach that many scholars utilize to interpret these movements and their actions often leads to a lack of complete understanding regarding them. In order to illustrate this approach and its fallacies, I looked at the bodies of scholarship surrounding two infamous religious movements from recent history, the Branch Davidians and the People's Temple. The Branch Davidians were a group of fundamentalists who lived in a compound 13 miles outside of Waco, Texas. Their doctrine centered on the power of prophecy, and their leader, David Koresh, claimed to know the true meaning of certain passages from the Book of Revelation. Koresh maintained an authoritarian hold in his congregation, and it didn't take long before reports of human rights abuses and stocks of illegal firearms within the compound reached the FBI. On February 28, 1993, the FBI and Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms launched a raid on the compound which resulted in multiple deaths on both sides and a 51-day siege that ended with a gigantic fire engulfing the entire compound and killing the vast majority of the Davidians inside, including Koresh. Now, the People's Temple was a church that held a very specific set of views, especially for their time. Throughout the 60s and 70s, they practiced a policy they dubbed apostolic socialism, encouraging communal living, shared incomes, and sexual and racial equality within the congregation. The temple's leader, Jim Jones, was a charismatic and paranoid leader whose fear of imminent nuclear war prompted him to relocate to an isolated compound called Jonestown in the jungle of Guyana. On November 17, 1978, Congressman Leo Ryan investigated Jonestown himself in response to reports of people being held against their will, and the, and the next day he was murdered along with four others by a group sent by Jones. Immediately afterwards, Jones orchestrated the murder-suicide of the People's Temple, including himself. 913 people. Now originally, I intended to analyze these groups themselves as examples of how alternative religious movements interact with various aspects of the outside world. However, upon investigating the scholarship linked to these movements, I noticed an individual approach that many scholars were taking in interpreting who these people were and why these things happened. This approach, dubbed the interpretive approach by the scholar Thomas Robbins, focuses on how these movements react to external factors, especially law enforcement agencies and the media. Now, while this is an important part of these cases, the approach often results in certain aspects being emphasized above others in scholars' analysis, and in extreme cases, internal factors are completely ignored. To put this into context, when looking at the scholars who investigated the People's Temple and the Branch Davidians, I discovered several trains of thought that persisted through multiple different sources. In the Branch Davidians' case, scholars wanted to discover the truth behind the biggest mystery of the Waco siege, how and why the infamous fire started. To this end, scholars focused on certain aspects of the Davidians' interactions with outside law enforcement and the possibility that the FBI might have played a direct role in the lighting of the fire. However, because of this focus on outside relationships, these sources missed an important source of evidence on this topic, the Davidians' own internal strife, their apocalyptic ideologies, and the desperation that Koresh instilled in them during the siege. In the People's Temple's case, scholars wanted to understand what compelled Jim Jones towards the murder-suicide of his congregation. They focused on Jones's past with outside organizations, such as the CIA and even socialist countries like Russia and Cuba. While these points effectively showed the origin of Jones's paranoia, they often delved too deeply into historical events utterly unrelated to the People's Temple itself, and as a result, the scholars' arguments meandered pretty heavily. Now, properly understanding religious movements like these two and the circumstances that led to their rise and downfall can educate about the dangers of religious fanaticism and help prevent similar tragedies from occurring in the future. Ultimately, however, the over-reliance of many scholars on the interpretive approach when dealing with this complicated subject obscures the full scope of the events in question and prevents us from receiving the proper lessons from these historical moments. Thank you.